Welcome in to episode two of the Holt Naylor Show. Hey, we had a little bit of success last week. Can we do it two weeks in a row? We hope so. We got ECU legend HB3 joining us in just a few minutes. We hope you enjoy the show, but if not, as always. Holt Naylor turns, and Holt will take off and run himself. He's at the 40-yard line. Holt Naylor to the 30. Look at him go. 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Pirates. There's local politics, bud. It's showtime! Welcome back in to episode two of the Holt Naylor Show. Shout out to our sponsors, Worth Chiropractic and Anson Belts. Boys, we had a little success week one. We won week one. Can we win week two? Can we stack episodes? What do you think? Got to stack the days. I like the energy you brought with the Jeff Gordon hat. Nothing but gas to the metal. The pedal to the ga- metal oh, today. Oh, jeez. <laughs> pedal to the metal. Here we <laughs> go. Start off slow into the wall I go. <laughs> but I'm excited. HV3, I think we're going to have a good show. Yeah, should be fun, Jack. Great episode ahead. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Let's go. Uh, we're always going to start off by talking ECU athletics. And I think, um, you know, this first hit on men's basketball, you know, in kind of the middle of the pack in the conference right now at ninth, you know, got a big game ahead, big week ahead. Obviously, uh, got a lot of talent. We're just trying to figure out, you know, how to use it all, how to win games. Uh, lost to SMU last week. You know, hopefully we continue to, you know, stack some wins and figure out how to win. Got a future for the Pirates in the conference championship to win in the tournament. So I still, I still believe in the Pirates. I do. We, we got a lot of talent. I think we need to, you know, cut down our rotation a little bit. Um, you know, I think we're playing eight guys right now. I'd like to get it between, you know, six or seven. Keep those talented guys on the court. You know, don't take them off. I, obviously. I played basketball in high school, never in college. I'm not sitting here saying anything like that, but um, we got a lot of talent. Let's keep them on the court. Obviously, they're going to get tired, but let's keep them out there as long as we can. Yep. You're not armchair quarterback and your armchair point guard. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> no, I, I, the Pirates, you know, they, they, they started off the year pretty strong, playing a lot of tough SEC competition, tough opponents. Played, played them well. Played really well. But, you know, that tough loss against SMU, that SMU team looked pretty legit. I watched that one. That was a good one. But, you know, there's a lot of – Good matchups coming up. It's a tough conference. A lot of these teams, all these games that we're playing, these teams seem like a coin flip game. Like they're, it's going to be tough. Um, you know, it seems like if you know if we're on the pace we're running, it might be another 500 season. But I'm with you. I'm trying to stay positive here. Stay positive. It's a lot better basketball to watch than it was last year. You can tell the difference. It's just it's a lot more competitive. I feel like this year as well. Well, just wait until. March Madness comes and the Pirates win the tournament and we're in the big dance. How are you going to feel then? Negative hey, Kate? I'm going to be negative. Kate. I'm going to be <laughs> fired up. I'm, I'm hoping we can spark some magic in the tournament. If we don't win the regular season, it's not looking good right now. I uh, Tulane did in the baseball last year. They did. Hey, if we win their conference, we're in the dance. So. We believe Jack. What do you think? Yeah, I still think really uh, early in kind of the conference schedule. We're two and two kind of middle of the pack there. Uh, by the time this releases, we will have played our matchup with North Texas which is um, kind of in the standings way of things, a pretty big game for us. And then on Saturday, uh, we play UAB. So big week ahead for the Pirates hoops, and uh, just looking forward to it, hoping they can get two wins here. They will. We believe in the Pirates. And then uh, the other Pirates, you know, men's team, is ECU baseball less than a month away. Uh, you know, is this the year that we break the door down, make it to Omaha? We got, a, you know, a lot of guys returning. We got a lot of talent. Uh, seems like we're right there. I sure hope it's this year. What do you boys think? Yeah, so just this week, actually, um, the latest kind of standings came out or preseason poll came out, and the Pirates were in there at 11. And interesting note, um, that's right in front of Duke, NC State, UNC, Campbell, and Virginia. So a lot of regional competitive schools that we play in baseball, and at least since I've been here at ECU, um, I've seen a couple competitive series between those schools and us. So looking forward to that. That's something to take note of. Uh, but also it's preseason, so things. And change. then we got two segment, or not? We got one segment idea, Jack. Left field segment. You came up with it. Tell us all about it and kind of get into that a little bit. Yeah. So just kind of when we were talking about this podcast, uh, the left field segment came to me, and obviously baseball, something that Greenville's passionate about, like football, and uh, the jungle especially is is kind of nationwide known, like the the environment in Clark Leclerc. Clark Leclerc. There we Stadium. go. The California came out yeah, of you for so- a second. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> is is like none to second to none and so if we were to bring the left fielder from a future series opponent prior to the series right so like if we're playing a weekend team uh maybe it's like let's say it's oklahoma we're playing oklahoma this weekend or Ryder the first series (laughs) yeah we're playing them this uh this weekend we get their left fielder on the podcast this week a couple days before uh, right 
and interview them, ask them if they've heard about the jungle and what to expect, and vice versa. It'll give us a chance to get Pirate Nation a uh, chance to know the left fielder. Yeah, use a little bit of uh, ammo, so get, ammunition, get so we kinda can juiced up before the series we yeah get series. i think it's cool because we release on thursday so i think it'd be perfect so that'll be a cool episode or a, a cool segment idea um we need a name for it so tag us at the whole ailer show or just no at whole ailer show on x tag us there with some segment ideas to name that segment because we don't have that yet but that'll be a cool segment when ecu baseball yep. um comes around that'll be fun other news for you personally podcast news get into that a little bit talk about what you're doing for ecu football obviously power hour is very successful talk about this next segment yeah so uh kind of similar to that but more in a podcast form ecu football is doing something called the ship's log uh they asked me to host it basically we're going to be introducing all the new coaching additions along with the new players um some old players will get on there too and kind of help break the ice with me but fun time introduce the new team members and uh like similar to the power hour, have some fun games and stuff and get to know the team. One episode down and Jack got his own game. Yeah, he's <laughs> already getting recruited. He's, you're staying with us though. You're gonna do yeah. both at the same time. So he's still in the portal. He is. True. Where where is our contracts at? Man, they're killing us, man. That's <laughs> what we need. <laughs> That's why I'm yeah. to put out my information on Twitter to make sure some podcast. <laughs> you might have been the me. hidden request. They might have uh, reached out there. <laughs> this segment is brought to you by Worth Chiropractic. Worth Chiropractic is your local choice for chiropractic care. Automobile accident, they'll specialize in treating automobile accidents, slips and falls while working closely with your attorney. Everyday back and neck pains or sports-related injuries, they offer safe, natural care to get you back to being you. They have free consultations and they'll work with your lawyer to file your insurance. 1-800-BACK-DOC today. Let's dive into Super Wild Card Weekend. You know, we talked about these games. Let's recap that a little bit. Boys, I, I hyped up the Browns a little too much. Um, I, I said they were a Super Bowl contender. Joe Flacco actually looked like Joe Flacco, which Drew uh, called him on last episode. So um, Browns fall to Texans. Shroud looks great, and they're on to the next round, and the Browns are not going to win a Super Bowl. So hopefully you did not ride me with that one because that uh... – <laughs> Pause. <laughs> oh, thanks for that, Jack. But they uh... – Hopefully, you did not go with that pick. And I think all of us did. We all got hyped on the Browns train. and I rode you on that pick. and Pause. (laughs) And it was a good first half. Let's be real. That first half was not too bad. Like, Flacco played good. Uh, You know, obviously, C.J. Stroud played good. It was just coming out. The Texans got that stop. They, I mean, the Browns got that stop on the Texans. They punted. And then Flacco was driving down the field. They were driving. He has a guy around his waist. He throws it. Bad mistake, but he throws it up, pick six, comes off next drive, pick six. Instead of 24 14, it's now 38 uh, 38 uh, You know 14. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's it on that. You know who else who knows a little bit about pick sixes other than myself, obviously? Dak Prescott, because yeah. he threw one to go down 27 to 0 in the first half. And that game did not look good. We said last week that we all, first of all, we all picked the Cowboys. I think Drew may have picked the Packers, but. We all said that, okay, well, I thought so, maybe not. Uh, We all thought that the Cowboys were on a 17-game or 16-game home win streak. We thought they were unbeatable at home, and they get destroyed. We said it was Jordan Love's moment to shine, and boy, did he shine. They move on to the next round. Recap of that. I'm sorry, Cowboys fans. Like, you guys, (laughs) you're in a slump right now in the playoffs. I don't know what to tell you. I'm not a Cowboys fan, but, uh, I mean, I cheer for him a little bit, but there's some really sad ones. Kenny Curling's. I know you're a sad Cowboys fan right now. I've already seen it on Twitter. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. I don't know what to tell you. Um, Jack, what game are you going to recap? I'm recapping the Lions. I want to just call out. We all missed it. We might have took the Cowboys. But we were also right last week. With the spread. We all said Green Bay would cover. That is true. So we covered. Sorry for interrupting, Jack. All I want good. to make sure we <laughs> at least cover our backs. Jack, here. who you want to recap? I'm taking the Lions beating the Rams this past weekend. Uh, Matthew Stafford homecoming. Detroit was on fire. Absolutely electric. Um, probably a pretty emotional scene for the Stafford family being back there, considering that he's probably a Lions legend. Um, and he had a legendary game. 25 for 36, 367 yards, two touchdowns. Unfortunately, that was not enough. Um, Matthew Stafford, sorry, he went to Detroit, did not come out with the win because Jared Goff was in there. He was composed, uh, looked like a true veteran like he is. Yep. Um, 22 for 27, 277 yards, touchdown. Monroe, seven receptions for 110 yards. The Lions just kind of it, it fit the script. 
It did. Uh, Cinderella story, Detroit, Eminem's in there. The whole stadium's like rapping his song. Like, I don't know. It was, it was cool for Detroit. I'm glad they did it. Um, and we'll see how long they First play make a in, run for. First in yeah. 30 years. Drew, who do you got? Yeah, uh, I'm covering the um, Eagles and Bucks game. Oh, boy. Here we yeah, go. Uh, I, I don't want to so. say I told you so, but, man, <laughs> did the Bucks do what I told everybody they were going to do. Um, yeah, but, uh, like, I feel like the Eagles showed everybody what they were for the last eight weeks. They're a team that wasn't able to tackle. Uh, they weren't really able to play defense, guard much of anybody. The Buccaneers had eight drops and still racked up 300 yards. Like, Baker probably should have had a 400-yard game. But speaking about Baker – I'm actually going to put my myself on the screen because this is kind of personal to me. Uh, after the game, like uh, there was something wrong with his stomach, and uh, they did an X-ray, and Baker actually posted it online. Uh, oh God, was he okay? Doing? Yeah, he's okay. So if you look uh, to the right of the screen, right under his pectoral muscle, you'll see about <laughs> huh? right there. Yeah, you might see a little pit bull, and then <laughs> under that. <laughs> Uh, on the bottom rig cage, you see another pit bull, and then on the sternum, a third pit bull. So uh, they found that Baker just has that freaking dog in him, dude. Uh, yeah, so there's hopefully he can get it fixed for um, the lion's sake, but uh, it doesn't look good for the lions. Um, <laughs> it for sure didn't look good for, for the eagles, but uh, Baker, he's got that dog in him. He called a shot. Dr. And, uh, Dr. Drew, is the dog uh, growing, or what's going on? What's the symptoms there? Is it getting worse or better? I guess we're just going to have to see. Dan Campbell's <laughs> going to tame the dogs. We'll see. We'll see in a few. So that's it for uh, Super Wild Card whoa, whoa, whoa. Weekend. We forgot about the Chiefs. Chiefs-Dolphins, yeah. That and we didn't specialize We found that. out the Dolphins were fraudulent like we all thought. Yeah, Drew called that too. Drew Drew hit called call the shots and they hit kind of perfectly. Obviously, I picked, I thought, I guess more of my heart with the, with the lefty. I picked uh, Tua there and uh, was hoping that they would pull it off. But Chiefs, obviously ran away with that game that was kind of a boring game i, I yeah. kind of lost interest that's why in we weren't going to cover we were yeah. just going to talk about it quick um biggest thing in that game was the helmet busting the helmet yeah. yeah well he's got another cold one in buffalo this week we'll see if we'll he can see. do that let's get on to divisional round i guess uh drew wait i think hv3 is ready to go so we'll talk about divisional round in just a second we'll get to jack let's go to hv3 live what's up harold can you hear me yeah can y'all hear me yes sir let's go what's up brother how you doing I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm watching Cars. Um, <laughs> hey, are great. We recording? Are we recording yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Oh, never mind. I was going to make a joke about something. <laughs> <laughs> but, dude, just thank you for doing this. Obviously, you know, ECU connects us, and um, you've been a great friend for me and kind of a mentor through some things, um, you know, throughout my career. And, obviously, um, we're connected through ECU, and you're a huge representative of ECU, and, you know, you give back all the time um you're, you're here all the time you know a lot of athletes when they're done with playing they you know they never come back that's kind of the end of their story but um you know it seems like ECU is really a part of you you're always back you you wear purple you know during rounds um you and your wife have given a huge donation obviously to Pirates Unite to help get an indoor to help with um you know Pirates Golf you know what um you know attracts you so much back to ECU rather than just focusing on you, you got a lot going on with Liv and your golf career and Obviously, your son, Liam, you know, what brings you back to ECU to make you want to give back? Oh, man, it's easy. The people. Um, I had an awesome coach. I just I just was really big about, I think, how much it changed my life. You know, like the things that have happened in my life, I don't know if they would have happened, um, you know, without going to ECU. Um, so it's important, and I really want, like, you know, the future student athletes to have the same opportunity, you know. At the, when you're there, you don't ever think about it. You're just like, I want to be the best. I want to beat everyone I look at. I want to beat everyone on my team, especially in golf. You're like, we're teammates, but, you know, like, uh, I want to win. So it's uh, it's an interesting dynamic, but I just know that ECU's meant the world to me uh, personally. And, you know, it costs a lot of money now for things to go your way, I think. And I've been super fortunate, and I think I just – I couldn't think of a better place to – give my time and my money than a place that did it for me when I had nothing. Dude, absolutely. I mean, I think you definitely have, and you've honestly been like a role model for, you know, the athletes who do leave um, and to help out and to come back and represent ECU. Like you're repping it even, like I said, you know, during rounds when you're not just in Greenville, like you're still repping and obviously ECU fans love you. Um, we all love you. You've done a lot, you know, even for just the athlete, you know, I came, you know, a couple years after you, um, but I mean, I, I noticed the change that you made and the people that, you know, kind of look up to you from, 
um, just your time here and your time coming back, like I said. Um, you know, with the next thing I wanted to ask about was, you, know, you, you kind of hit on it a little bit, it's expensive and all of that, but, you know, this new world of college athletics is NIL. And, you know, when you were here, you know, you didn't have NIL. I barely had a little bit of it. Um, some of the guys here, you know, played last year and they had a little bit of it. But, you know, I think ECU fans and a lot of people would want to know, like, your stance on NIL. How do you view it? Um, you know, do you think it could help us? You know, are you involved in it or just, you know, anything you could give us on, on NIL? Um, so the collective wasn't started when we were doing, you know, Maine and I were yeah. doing our thing. So um, – I'm sure I will. I like my chances a lot, but you know, I had already allocated some money, some funds. So I, I think this next year, yeah, I, I wouldn't. Yeah, I, it seems like the only way you can win. Um, my my deal is this: I think that I think that for a kid like myself, it would have gone a long ways. But I can't say I would have been a great student athlete with that kind of money. Uh, oh, I feel that. Um, so I struggle with that part of it. I just know the bad decisions I make now. There's no telling the decision I could have made, you know, freaking 18, you know, like, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. That's my take, but I just don't know how else you win. You know, uh, I, I don't blame these guys that come from these, you know, rural areas where they're like, all right, bro, you know, like this guy's going to give me 15,000, you know, how much 15, that might be more yeah. than their whole family makes in their household. Um, so it's, it's tough. It's a losing battle. Um, I think the NCAA or someone needs to come in a way and do make sure that this money is around when they're 30, 40. You know, there should be some type of uh, – if you're going to pay someone, like your job, there should be some type of s- contract that says, hey, you know, I'm going to play for two years for this amount. And, you know, I just, I just don't – I don't believe in just giving someone money and being like, all right, man, I can go somewhere else. I just – that's where I just – it just leaves a – bad taste in my mouth because then you start losing sight of the other opportunities the people you meet the opportunities the jobs you can get out of school because not everyone's going to you know turn pro and have a pro career you know and you know obviously everyone has that facade that they're gonna (laughs) they're gonna be like the next great thing um so that's where i get mad i just think that you we these kids have to be held accountable if you're going to give them a hundred thousand or whatever you're giving them and there's there's no accountability. It's just pure like, oh, I don't want to play for this guy or whatever. I'll go get a hundred grand somewhere else. And now you're talking about numbers where like people are making millions. How much is that true? I don't know, but just give me a hundred grand at eighteen. I can show you. Yeah, how you up. ain't lying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think um, you kind of hit it right there. It's like you know, you might not agree with it. You might not. You know, some of the things. You know, when are teams going to hire financial advisors for these kids too? Because like you said, if you're eighteen, you get a hundred thousand dollars. Like. <laughs> Most people don't know what to do with that when they're 25, 26 years old. Better yet, 18. I mean, think about $100 in Greenville. Yeah. <laughs> you can do pretty much that, anything man. you want. <laughs> I'd be buying the bar. What's your one? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that's huge. I, I, mean, I appreciate your honesty with that because, like you said already, though, I mean, it's, it's hard to win without it now. Like, it's such a staple in college athletics that, you know, it's hard to win – just recruiting guys and you you hit on it too and we talked about it last week is like we think the biggest recruiting pitch to ECU is the people and the environment and the city but at the end of the day if you go tell a recruit that now they're probably going to laugh in your face they're going to ask you about NIL and that's all they care about and you know that's just how it is and um you know I think we live in like a, a microwave society and you know that kind of connects with NIL you know with with college athletics it is NIL with normal people it's you know just wanting success right away and, you know, I think when people see you, they see a, you know, 33-year-old Jordan Brand athlete played in the Masters uh, in live now, you know, amazing family, see the fame, see the money, but they don't see the, you know, 12, 12-year-old you, the 14-year-old you, the 18-year-old you. Um, you know, if you could go back to that younger version of yourself and just tell them any advice, you know, what would that be? And, uh, yes, what would that be? Oh, don't worry about it. Whatever matter, whatever happens right now isn't going to matter. There's very few decisions at that age that are going to matter in five, five, ten years, or maybe five days. Um, and we've created this society where, like, if you mess up, um, you're you're toast or you're done. And it's quite. Uh, I mean, Nick Saban's, you know, obviously just retired, and they're obviously yep. everyone's going down their little Hall of Fame. But he, uh, Moose Muhammad, was playing for the Panthers when I was growing up, and I never knew how he had messed up. Um, I never knew that story. So he, he always tells that story like, what are you going to do, send the kid back to, you know, 
send the kid back home. No, it's, yeah, you no, know, you don't want that. So I just uh, I think about that a lot. Like, you know, you're, you're so worried about not messing up that you never just take a shot and go do what you want to do. And you know, I don't know. I just, it's things like that, and you think about a lot, and you know, you try to uh, try to tell people like, hey, you're gonna try to do the right things, your best you can, but you're not going to be, you're not perfect. No one is. So just trust that like the things you're doing, that good things are going to happen. Yep, hundred percent. I think just. Um, you know, I read a little, I was reading a little bit about you early in your foundation and like just being surrounded by the right people. And I know your foundation, um, you know, kind of helps with that now, which we can get into here in a few minutes, but, you know, also, you know, talking about society is, you know, everyone as a society, everyone moves, you know, at a hundred miles an hour and, you know, everyone wants success, but, you know, to get success, you're moving at a hundred miles an hour. You have, you know, the world at your fingertips with your phone. You can look up whatever you want. I mean, if you want to learn how to do something, you just click on YouTube now and do it. And people want to be, you know, successful right away, you know, for you, um, you know, you all, but you play in a sport in golf where, you know, you can't look, you know, a shot behind you or a shot ahead of you. You got to focus on this one shot. You know, how is that, you know, do you do mental exercises or how do you really lock in just being present in the moment, which, you know, I think a lot of people don't, um, do a great job of is just focusing, you know, in the moment, you know, where your feet are and, you know, just talk on that a little bit. Uh, what I remember the most is, um, uh, you know, when you ask that question is, it's so hard to do. Um, you know, you, you have all these people that are always trying to help you. It's just, it's just really hard to go, hey, I'm going to focus on this right here, this only. It's just hard. I mean, you get to Augusta, you see some shots you really, you know, you've seen before, and you're like, oh, I can pull that off. You know, it's just, it's just difficult. But at the same time, um, that's the battle. That's, like, why you play sports, you know. Uh, I, 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 I enjoy that that mental like can i do this um it sucks sometimes obviously but, <laughs> you know um and then you were asking about people around me uh something happened in my life not that long ago that you figure out how much people really love you so um the foundation has always been something that i've wanted to do to create that environment for kids that might not have that some type of uh like take the golf out of it just have someone in their corner to be like hey i did this what do I need to do to, you know, like either make amends, do things better, whatever that might be. They're kind of, you know, just they're like a perimeter of like, hey, this is where I'm not going to go. This is where I was. And this is where I want to go. And I can't get there without you. So um, I think right now is a very like great time to just say that, like, that's that's what you want in life. You want people to keep you accountable, you know, love on you when things aren't right. And when things are really high, bring you down and bring you back to earth. So uh, I, I'm glad you asked. This is the first interview I've done. Um, and that's like the greatest thing that I think I can do is help someone else. For sure. You know, in the future. Because um, it's not going to be the last one, hopefully for me. <laughs> yeah, but someone, no, for sure. Know, someone's going to go through it. And, you know, that's, I have a great opportunity to help someone else. And that's always been my thought process. I mean, you've done a great job of it, actually with your foundation is just like mentoring kids. I mean, look, I mean, kids look up to you now. Like I'm sure you looked up to Tiger Woods and those guys like we all did growing up. Like you're that guy now that, um, you know, little kids are looking up to, you know, little there's going to be another Harold Varner, a young one growing up that wants to be like you and, um, you know, views you as kind of a role model. So, you know, you've took that next step. Um, one more thing. I'm going to let Caden and Jack ask a couple of questions real quick, but Obviously, um, the par three, I have to ask, because we were talking about you wearing purple and all that, but you, you ended up wearing a little Carolina blue, and I was reading an article about you had a bet with Michael Jordan. Um, yeah. Is any of that true? Can you talk about that? That is true. It's Duke-Carolina game. Um, and I still remember where I was watching it, and Carolina ended up winning. Obviously, they ended up playing in the national championship. Yep. Whatever, but they won, and we ended I mean, it just sucked. <laughs> Oh, I mean, so, if you don't know, I really, I just despise Carolina. Yeah, a lot, a lot of us do. Caden, you want to ask him a question? Yeah. yeah well, speaking, Harold, nice to have you on. It's Caden no, here. Thanks for um, having me, bro. Yeah. Speaking of Carolina and despising Carolina, one of my favorite memories, uh, I think, <laughs> at ECU, you were a part of actually was Carolina was 2018 when we beat Carolina here in Dowdy Ficklin. And I'll never forget after the game, you were in the locker room just dancing away with us. And that was one of, the, one of my favorite memories of all time. I was like, no way. That was the is... first time I've been in there. That, yeah, oh, was that the first that time? Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that um, was awesome. Yeah, that was nuts. I mean, it was, but like, 
I hate going in there because you know it's been like such a long day. You know, you're like, <laughs> you know, Coach Hughes is like, come on, get in here. I'm like, bro. <laughs> but you looked like you loved it. As a, that was my red shirt freshman year, and I was like a young guy myself. That was my first time, you know, on the travel team, and then obviously a big time win. And then seeing someone like yourself, it was like, oh my god, this is awesome. This is I got amazing. a funny story about that. Uh, Amanda obviously was with me, and. <laughs> Um, Amanda and my good friend, uh, Matt Dodson. And obviously, you know, like when we're about to pray, you know, like if you're right there, you like bend down, like yeah. everyone else stands <laughs> up. So I like, I get, down, I get down, you know, we're, they're praying. And as I get up, both my wife and Matt Dodson are like down on a knee next to John Gilbert. <laughs> 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 yeah. And so I, I'll never forget that. But, uh, you know, hey, everyone needs another prayer, but it would just crack me up. Everyone's standing up, and Amanda and Matt are just, like, bending down. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I remember it well. That's awesome. That's a great story. Uh, I'm curious. You know, you, you were in ECU, what, in the 2010, 2011, 2012. I'm curious. You know, that was my favorite memory at ECU. You know, you were part of it. It was a great win. What was your, you know, looking back at your time at ECU, maybe sports-wise or just, you know, you know, in school, oh. you know, what was your favorite moment looking back at college? And there's two of them. One of them, I didn't know how good we were. Like, so that kind of was funny. <laughs> Hold on, my kids yelling. No worries. Oh no, you're good. All right, she, yeah, Amanda's tackling them right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, number one, first football game we went to, we played West Virginia and we beat them. Um, which was nuts. I was like, bro, like West Virginia is really good. Like, how is East Carolina this good? You know, like blah blah. <laughs> you know, like you know, everyone's rushing the field, whatever. And then, like next thing you know, we're fifteenth in the country after four games. Uh, the next one was, um, uh, North Carolina State, NC State, triple overtime. Russell Russell Wilson's playing. Heck yeah, we won. Yeah, uh, man, I've never seen so many fights. <laughs> was that West Virginia game the game where like cops were beating? Yeah, or, at, yeah they were like they rushed the yeah. field and cops were like tackling like select few people. I mean, yeah. there's thousands of people on the field. Seventeen yeah. year old girl rushing the field, just getting laid out by a cop. <laughs> she did. She did. She did. <laughs> did you? Uh, you know, did you make it on the field that game I when you not, rushed? That's what I was saying. I didn't like. I didn't get it. You know, I was just like, <laughs> bro, like this. So the, you know, like it just caught on to me. I loved. I mean, tailgating's my favorite thing in the world like i love a good tailgate i could not watch i could watch the game on tv and sit there and cook all day <laughs> so and when you're doing it for a school that you like you're super passionate about um it just makes it even sweeter yeah last question i got for you looking now at your like professional career what was the most exhilarating moment you've had was it your 92 foot you know eagle putt or was it playing the masters i was just curious there um two of them uh because one of them just is really like humbling and you know like as a parent now I, I can think about it uh when i got my pj tour card i took a red eye from portland we're driving home and you ever heard of the tom joiner morning show I'm sure no, i have not it. it's it's big it's pretty big you, if you look it up they're like you're like congratulations to the young brother for getting his pj tour card and my dad and i are in the car you know and i'm just like oh damn that's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> and uh my dad looks at me and he goes he like turns on the radio he goes hey you were always a winner in my book you don't ever let anyone tell you any different that's so awesome so i just like uh it, it's not very good for me because then you become arrogant cocky and think you can't be stopped but you know you know how that goes in life. everybody needs a little well. bit of that yeah, you got to have some dog in you. And I just, uh, there's a fine balance. Uh, but that was one. Two would be, um, it was pretty cool when I won. I wish there wasn't so much drama around live in the PGA Tour, but winning and my kid having a hand, foot, and mouth, and like Amanda not knowing <laughs> I won. Uh, that was awesome. That was like really cool. And then for like show and all that, yeah, the putt. Yeah, I mean, who the hell thinks you're going to make it from 90 feet? <laughs> and, then it, and then it goes in. So, yeah, it's uh, if the live stuff wouldn't have been going, that probably would have been the biggest putt of the year. But For sure. It is what it is. It was a great memory. It, you know, it helped me out a lot in the live talks. So, uh, it is what it is, babe. That's awesome. I love hearing that because you usually don't hear, like, the, you know, that, that those humbling moments. You usually just see, like, the electric moment like the putt like that's an awesome moment but you don't you know know hear the moment like the personal story of like the pga card so i appreciate you sharing that 
Oh, dude, man. And then, like, obviously, it's just, it becomes more relevant when you become a parent. And you're like, because at the time, you're like, all right, cool, dad. Thanks. You know, whatever. <laughs> then you become a parent. And you're like, all right, I get it. You know, just yeah, it was pretty things cool. Things you need to do as a father. For sure. All right. I think Jack has one or two questions for you. And then we're going to let you go, dude. Yeah. What's up, no, no worries. You're good. Jack. What's up, buddy? Um, just one more question for you. You were just kind of talking about all, like, the crap with uh, Liv that was going around when it kind of first started. Was just curious, like if it was really a tough decision for you, or if at the end of the day, like you were just trying to play ball, and and that's just kind of the direction that the game was going in, and and that's why you did it, or like I know uh, there's a lot that, of buzz around it. Yeah, yeah, which is totally fine. The buzz, I can, I can, I, I like playing. Like you said, I wanted to play golf. Right. That that's what bothered me the most. Like I don't really care where I play golf. I just always, I've always played golf to make money. From where right. I grew up, like I play golf to make the most amount of money whenever I can make it. And um, I just had some wonderful friends and people at the PJ Tour that I, that ran the PJ Tour that I really, really like, like love. I still talk to. Um, yeah. So that's that was the hard part. But like at the end of the day, like it was kind of nice, you know. Like you, uh, the first <laughs> time I said no, and then now like I said yes, and all I think about is I wish I would have said yes the first time because the people that really love you, they're gonna be like right on do do what's best for you do, like it's exactly. an opportunity um so it uh it's it, it worked in my favor but like we it was a great reminder that like hey man i'm I'm here to serve my family and take Most care definitely. of the things closest to me and it's easy to uh lose sight of that i think it's it's different in a real sport though in a real sport man some of these people that are talking would get punched in the mouth right like like so it's funny like i know you guys like played real sports so it's like man that's crazy you can say that you know but in, in golf it's just such like a um i guess prestigious sport that people are just like trying to articulate don't want to hurt anyone's feelings which some people love but at the same time you know like you're providing for your family you're gonna do what's best yeah for you. like what are we doing yeah like why are we arguing about this just be like hey man i don't really agree with it and i had i and that's where i just like I, you know, the circle got smaller, but it got tighter. And I, I figured out I was loved by a lot of people and you just got to keep going. Keep in you know, one thing I've always wanted to do is I wanted to help ECU and I wanted to help my foundation. So, um, you yeah, certainly did that. <laughs> yeah. 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 What well, so got just, us in your corner? <laughs> oh, come say hello to Liam. Come here, bud. Say oh, let's see you. <laughs> what up, home <laughs> What's up, Liam? Come say hello. Y'all had a pretty cool. Uh, Y'all had a pretty cool moment when when he was running across the putting green. Uh, you want to talk about that a little bit and uh, you know going dad mode right there on the uh, on the green when he went up to go pick up the ball. Yeah, uh, earlier in that round, earlier in that hey. round, uh, they were like, "There's guys out there," and they're like, "Hey, uh, you need to, uh, hey, you need to make sure he doesn't get in the water." And I'm like, "What are you talking about? I'm not gonna let Liam in the water." What are you talking about? <laughs> Um, and then, uh, he kept picking up golf balls, you know, I'm like, well, I think some people really want to play and dude, you know, I'm out of breath, you know, like not, you know, golf isn't really like the most athletic sport and, uh, <laughs> dude, he just, I just called him. It was like perfect timing. So it was, it was awesome. We had a great time, but, uh, I was pretty, pretty gassed once I got done. <laughs> it was right, a cool Liam, moment. Say bye. You go, go get cake, bye. cupcakes. Bye. See good you, good. Liam. <laughs> We'll let you go, dude. Appreciate no, you you're fine. Um, you're fine. joining, you're dude. No rush. He just, it was unbelievable timing. The cupcakes are done. <laughs> you're good. You're, you're fine. I'm going to No, I think cupcakes. that's it. Do y'all have anything uh, else? I think I got one more for him. Um, Fire. Heron, I was curious, you know, you know, if I was in your position when you were an amateur athlete, obviously in college and you make it into the professionals, like I would be looking forward to meeting like a Tom Brady one day or a Peyton Manning. Who is kind of that, you know, that, that icon that you've met? I know you have Michael Jordan's big with you, but you know, outside of Michael Jordan, maybe Michael Jordan, if you want to share that, who's the biggest uh, icon that you've met that just blown you away, like looking up to and then finally getting to me as a kid to adult? Tiger would have been the one, but I met Tiger so late that I was like a decent at golf to where like I just wanted to beat him. <laughs> <laughs> and then he became like a really good friend, like where I could just text him, talk shit, you know, so it just became very like, uh, it was just different, you know, like I, I yeah. wish I, like if I'd have met him at like, 20 i'd have been like oh damn bro <laughs> Man, <you're laughs> <a little bit. laughs> yeah you know what i mean i just would have, i just would have uh I, I yeah i just would have been shocked but you know and we we had a great time when we met uh we had a great conversation the first time we met uh that i'll you know i'll never forget 
because our lockers were always next to each other. And I still remember asking him to play. And, you know, I was so upset we hadn't played golf because my first two years he was hurt. So I was just like, this kind of sucks, bro. Like, you know, what are we doing? So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was uh, – Tiger would be it for sure. Um, who – man, who have I met that, like, just really – I mean, I still remember the first time I met MJ. Like, I was at a basketball game, and we were having fun, and this lady was like, hey, M would like to meet you, blah, blah. And Amanda, Amanda goes, so what do I say? I'm like, I don't know. That's a great question. Hey. <laughs> what do I say? <laughs> yeah, so I wasn't – he's just – he's just. A, I had talked to him on the phone before, so it was just like kind of um, – you just be yourself, man. Right, like, yeah. People people get wigged out when you're, like, doing too much. So just be yourself. And, you know, they both of them have been great through my life, whether it's my career or, uh, you know, golf, you know, whatever it is. You know, they've been really great people to just bounce things off of. Heck, yeah. Dude, well, we appreciate you joining. Uh, it means a hey, lot, obviously. I can't believe it was that quick. Y'all keep <laughs> yeah. kicking our ass. Go find For sure. For sure. Go yeah, Pirates. Appreciate you, dude. Go Pirates. Let's have him on again. <laughs> yeah, we will. We'll have to work on know. it. All right, for sure. See you, brother. What a guy. What a guy. That, that was, was awesome. awesome. Um, obviously, I literally texted him, and he was let me know time, when. Um, that's why he was our first one. He's a huge ECU guy. Um, one of the biggest supporters of the Pirates. Obviously, like I said, he has his own foundation, the HV3 Foundation. That's huge. He talked on it a little bit. Um, also donated huge to the Pirates Unite, which is the indoor um, practice facility, which we need to get built. We've all talked about it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just what a guy. Obviously, he's become a great friend. You know, we've had some good times with him, but uh, we'll have to we'll have to get him on again someday. Yeah, I think he could have stayed the whole show if he wanted he to. He really could have. <laughs> he liked it. He liked I told it. him it'd be quick, and I was like, he's rolling. Yeah, he Let's just let him keep on. rolling. <laughs> yeah, so obviously, uh, you know, appreciate that. Um, next week, while I'm already on this, um, we have a – there's a very high likely that we have a college game day host on here next week. So oh, I haven't wow. fully confirmed the time yet, but once his schedule is fully clear, we'll be able to announce that. Follow us at the whole Ehlers show on X, and we will be announcing that very soon. But possible next week, another huge guest. We're going to keep wow. rolling with these guests. If you have any, I guess, if you want to hear from anyone, any former ECU players, anyone that I may have uh, relationships with that these guys may know, um, or maybe not, maybe we can just reach out to them. I mean, we're not afraid to do that. This is the people's show. We've said it before. You know, we want to have big guests like that on. And obviously, he's one of the bigger ones, probably the biggest name out of ECU right now, uh, former athletes. I mean, there's a couple other that are right up there with him, but none bigger than him. Yeah, and it was cool hearing his, you know, his stories, the West Virginia game, like, he, yeah. Like you said, he didn't realize how good, like, big of a moment that was in the moment. Um, so I loved hearing that. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, that was fun. Let's get back. I don't know where we even were at with the divisional, divisional. round. I think we're at the 49ers All right, Packers. so get back to that. You get back to yours, and then we'll kind of go from there. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously the Packers are coming off a huge road win for them um, in Dallas. Jordan Love's absolutely been on fire. Won't go into his stats because you mentioned it earlier. But a couple things you didn't mention earlier um, was Aaron Jones absolutely was toting rock the other night. He looked great. <laughs> he did. And my former teammate at Nevada, I got to give a shout out to him, Romeo Dobbs, uh, six receptions, 151 yards, and a touchdown. Just lights Ball. out. Uh, definitely a dude that Jordan Love was turning to throughout the game. You going to get him on the show soon? Yeah, we'll, we'll reach out to him after the season. Dude, yeah. I was telling you earlier, he's kind of a quiet kid. Yeah. Um, but... For sure, just a great person, great human being, um, even better teammate. Just a guy that shows up, goes to work every day, and he's so talented. We were uh, we were texting in our podcast group chat, and I was like, Jack, because uh, we were talking about potential guests down the road, and obviously HV3, um, and I was like, Jack, you know, we were talking about who we could get, and Jack was like, I think I can get Romeo. And it was during the game, and, I, and like three minutes later, he scored. And I was like, can you call Romeo right now and get him <laughs> on next week? But obviously, we had HV3, and you were just going to let him have his own show. But yeah, hopefully we can get him yeah, on so soon. we'll talk to Romeo maybe a little down the road. But the Packers defense also showed up big time handling the Cowboys offense. I mean, you talk about Dak kind of um, shit in the bed a little bit. <laughs> Sorry for that language, but he did. You bleep that one out? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, it was big credit to the Packers' defense. They blanketed him with zone coverage. Um, the run game was shut down, so I didn't think they had much help um, around them. But going forward, I think the Niners kind of pose a different kind of versatility, and I think they're a bigger threat for them. 
uh, between CMC, Debo, Kittle, Ayuk. Is this your um, heart talking to your mind? Kind of both. <laughs> but I, I he's, do, he's hyping yeah. up the Niners while wearing a Niners jersey right now. Yeah, but I'm being honest. But the 49ers <laughs> starters are coming off basically a two-week bye. They didn't play the last week of the yeah. season versus the Rams. And then obviously this last week and they didn't play. So they're going to be fresh. Levi Stadium's going to be on fire. Um, definitely looking forward to this game. It Didn't you say you had? What did you say, Drew? They could be rusty, too. Yeah, I was Two about weeks to say. off is a long time. No, we're healthy. <laughs> we'll see if they can get back into it. Guess we will. You they, like, go ahead, Caden. I was like, I was about to say, I have them my Super Bowl, so they better not be rusty. <laughs> Jack like slipped into our uh, podcast chat the other day that he might be going to the game. Are you going to the game? I have a flight booked, and my brother stays close by to the stadium. Um, so we were looking at tickets, but I mean, tickets are just. It's crazy right now. Looks so you're like not? For the very top level, it's like 500. It's like, I'm not going to pay that much yeah, to just send the nosebleeds. You can have a great view right there on the TV right. at the old uh, Jolly I'll be in. No, I'll be in Greenville. <laughs> if a restaurant wants us to come, we'll watch the game there. You just <laughs> yeah. reach out to yeah, us. Yeah, reach out to at the whole day. We'll watch the whole Saturday. Day. We'll we watch will. the games. Um, fun fact real quick. There was a chance for like three minutes that me, Kate, and my brother were going to the Chiefs-Dolphins game. That was like negative 30 degrees. There, like We were talking. We were like, because my brother texted me, and I was like, he's like, you want to go? And I told Grace, my girlfriend, I was like, uh, I mean, not really, but this would be a heck of a story one day. It'd be brutal right. in the moment. And then I texted Caden, and he was like, I'm down. It's like, wait, really? Like, it's going to be 20 I, to negative 20 outside. I, I thought about it, and I was like, if we did to get a plane ticket, would we even be able to land? Hey. Like, the snow is so bad. That's fine. what I was thinking about. <laughs> and then getting to the stadium is a whole other part. Well, I, it, it sounded great in the moment. And then I was like, I don't know. That's really cold. <laughs> it's like, yeah, they were like, don't let your skin touch the air for more than like an hour or something like that. And these, uh, they're like Kelsey's out there not wearing sleeves. I'm like, bro, how's he doing that? And not getting hypothermia. The Bills game almost looked worse. Did you see the Bills had a free seating? Because there was so much snow in the stands. It was just like first come, first serve. Yeah. I and, thought that was the best atmosphere. Of oh, yeah. Because you're going to get the diehards yeah. up front. And it, like watching that game, I was like, this seemed like a like college atmosphere. Like It was rowdy. It was yeah. crazy. I don't know. It just kind of gave me. It was almost like a high school football vibe. Like yeah, high school too, football yeah. playoff vibe. Like yeah. when they scored touchdowns, they were throwing snow in there. Like, yeah. It was pretty sick. <laughs> That's cool. Um, so you're rolling with the Niners, huh? Obviously. All right, Drew, who are you going to recap this week? Or not recap, uh, preview this week, and what game are you going to talk to, talk about? And let's hear, uh, let's hear you. All right, uh, my game is Lions versus Bucks. As I've already talked about, Baker Mayfield, he got a little <laughs> he got a little wrong in him. <laughs> so, shoot. Uh, yeah, um, but Detroit, this is not the same matchup that the Eagles were. Uh, Detroit, they're um, a top 10 rushing team in, in the league, which is impressive, but the Buccaneers are number five in rushing defense, which poses good against the Lions. But the Lions are the 27th best passing defense in the league. That's not good. and uh, Especially when you're going against the dog. Yeah. I mean, you saw that. And the Buccaneers had eight drops. I just don't see that happening again. And, and the Lions are good, but... I'm going with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to beat the Detroit. <laughs> in Detroit. In Detroit. They are the 27th best passing defense. And what I just saw, that's a team that can air it out. And then everyone talks about the Lions run defense. Well, Tampa can't run the ball anyway, so that doesn't matter. <laughs> so I think Tampa's going to do the impossible in Detroit and send Dan Campbell to Cancun. Aren't we forgetting about uh, Budget Chris McCaffrey as well? Oh, Budget Chris Well, he ain't doing nothing. <laughs> it's all Baker. It's all Baker, baby. but you just never know when budget CMC could go off. Oh, he will, but it's all Baker now, man. So you're riding <laughs> Baker, Baker in the Bucks to take down the Lions. You're just riding. I mean, you got to ride it out now. I mean, you you've hyped it up. Well. You already hit one shot. If you hit two in a row, so what happens the week after that? Oh, uh, let's worry about this week. Caden, <laughs> <laughs> who do you got this like week? Like Harold said, focus on each shot at a time. Yeah. Um. So I'm looking at the Ravens Browns. Uh. You know, the Browns came off and played eight. I mean, that's Browns, Ravens, Browns, Ravens, Texans. I just completely just – I thought the Browns would be yeah. here. But uh, the Texans played a complete game last week, and it's going to be hard to do against the Ravens, especially when you have Lamar MVP Jackson going against you. Uh, going against 38-year-old Joe Flacco, that was uh, a little different. He's not going to move. But you get pressure on Lamar, he's going to make you hurt for it. Uh, and I don't think the Texans can play two complete games like that. I, I also think that the Ravens' defense is really battle-tested. They – dominated your Niners a couple, uh, on Christmas night. Uh, after that, they dominated Tua and the Dolphins. So I think they're a battle-tested defense. And, of course, 
I think the the Ravens offense is night and day versus the Browns offense as well. So I'm going with the Ravens. I think they uh, send the young uh, Stroud boys home. Heck of a rookie season by Stroud. Oh, is it the best rookie was, year ever? I was happy for him. Like no, yeah, obviously I picked the Browns, but after the game, like. Yeah, he's glad C.J. Stroud's doing very that. humble. What I love yeah. about yeah, he's so humble. And what about oh, I also love about C.J. Stroud and the, the Texans, the Stroud boys. Um, <laughs> they're just they're just they they play as a unit the last couple of weeks. I really like that. But what I like about C.J. Stroud is just how calm he is in the pocket. Yep. I was watching that game and rewatched a couple of plays recently on like he just looks so calm, so calm and relaxed, and he just delivers the ball effortlessly. But I just think the Ravens are just gonna be all over him this week. Stroud or uh, Puka for rookie of the year. Literally two, probably the two best rookie seasons ever. Uh, maybe other than Andrew Luck, but I, it's comparable. Who are you taking? You got to give Co right. You can't give it to just one guy. Nah, it's going to the quarterback always. It's Puka it. though, I mean, I know he did it all but... season. He just did it in the playoffs. Strout did too. You got to give Co to yeah, both of them. Well, you might be right there, but the youngest quarterback to ever win a playoff game that might have overlooked yeah. Puka, but but Puka had a great playoff thing too. Drew, you up there making a face. What do you think? <laughs> Man, uh, I just made a face because it's so hard. Uh, I mean, those Whoa. are two really <laughs> pause. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, those are two really good rookies. But I mean, it's hard to not give it to a quarterback. So I think Poop. Well, uh, Stroud, Stroud will Whoa. get it, but Puka definitely has a strong case for sure. Yeah, it's like the Heisman. You're not giving the Heisman. You really, give the co. they else. give Co. Yeah, I know. You I just gotta don't think they co. do. Think Lamar and CMC. No, that ain't Lamar's. Happening. Lamar's got you. Ha- you have. Sports bettors super upset about that. So the bets, <laughs> the bets for uh, the odds for Lamar win it are insane right no, now. No, they are. They? Yeah, he's 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 locked, locked in. in. No, that's why I said they won't give a co. Because- yeah, I had McCaffrey like early on. I liked him. I thought he should win it. In one of our practice episodes, I literally said McCaffrey should win MVP. And then Caden just popped out the odds and shut that down. Yeah, really quick, so. have you looked at those recently? No, it's probably like still like minus seventeen. We got to see the playoffs play out though. Oh yeah, when- well I got the playoffs. I got your Niners versus the Ravens. That's what I got. And I think the Ravens dominate them a second time. That's what I got. But we'll see. We'll see. All right, I got Chiefs, Bills, Sunday at 6.30. Both teams 11-6. and six. Um, Kind of both out of bad environment. Not bad environments, but freezing cold. I don't think the cold's going to affect either one. They both have experience in it. The high in Buffalo is 25. The mm. low is like 10 degrees. So it's going to be a cold one. Uh, maybe Mahomes can get a new helmet that actually works in the cold. Did y'all see that? Yeah, that was nasty. Um, but obviously, uh, the Chiefs have a dynasty over there. They're riding high. They might not have played the best in the um, regular season. Obviously, they learn how to win in the playoffs. They got some sort of formula there with Mahomes, Kelsey, um, Andy Reid. But Buffalo also wasn't even looking like they were going to make the playoffs. They come in, they go on a run, make it, uh, hosting two playoff games. Now, if you would have told someone that midseason, they would have probably laughed in your face just because they weren't playing good. They looked terrible. Josh Allen was kind of shaky. They're finally turning it on. Um, now, both teams 11-6 and six coming off big wins in the environment. I personally am taking Buffalo. I think Chiefs receivers are so sketch other than literally Kelsey, and they have too many drops. They have a lot of – um, missed opportunities, and I think it's eventually going to catch up with them. Has caught up with them yet. Did a little bit in the regular season. Uh, didn't really last week with a win, obviously, versus the Dolphins. But I'm taking Buffalo. I think the receivers are going to you know, miss one too many opportunities, and Josh Allen's going to you know, ride to the next round. I actually really like that. I, I like that pick. I think Josh Allen the last three years as well has lost to two of the best quarterbacks, uh, young quarterbacks, future Hall of Famers as well. So I think it's his time finally to – for this week, at least, make a, a good a run. A little fun fact. I believe that Buffalo is the only stadium that plays in like that kind of cold environment like that that doesn't have heaters under their field surface, their yeah. playing surface. And it's like we know what it's like playing on like a rock hard. Like, it hurts yeah, for one. It's, it's bad. And, and, like, and then just like continuously pushing your feet into it like it's not good. Yeah. So. If, if the Bills do win, though, I'm kind of going to miss the, the Taylor Swift stuff this year. You know, I've been Ooh. hating on it every week. And then this past week, you know, when she was rubbing the cold window, because uh, it kept fogging up, I was like, I'm actually going to miss this. Um, so you're Swifty? You're converted Swifty? I you? actually really like Taylor Swift's music. I really do. Uh, but everyone got on the bandwagon of hating this year. But then I, this past week, I was just like, what are we doing? You're diving into it. What are we it? doing? I'm diving into it. Did you see her it. swag surfing? That was, yes. was kind of cringe. That's what got me as well. That on the, I didn't like that. That was kind of cringe. I thought yeah. it was cringe. Mama you're, Kelsey was doing it too. Yeah, I, that, it was cringe, but it was just like... I needed that. I needed that in my weekend last week. 
Me seeing that was enough to root for the Bills as well. <laughs> <laughs> do we do we need to go to Super Bowl picks right now, or can we talk about Jason Kelsey retiring? We can talk about that real quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the best careers, I guess. Crazy enough, as I was watching the game, um, and I think one of y'all sent it in the group chat, and you're like, Kelsey's retiring after this year. And I was like, no, he's not. And then today he comes out, he's retiring. Obviously one of the best um, centers ever. So, yeah, I mean, I, if you want to say anything. I mean, I just think it's cool, like, what he's done. Because I think it, his, like, whole podcast is a little out of his comfort zone. Um, but that probably was one of, like, kind of the inspirations that I had when you, you kind of mentioned this whole vision to me. Like, I like watching their podcast a lot, and I enjoy that. So kind of curious to see how he continues that and um, just like coming out, like what he has to say from it and obviously had a great career. I wonder if he'll keep it up. I mean, that is... Oh, of course. You think? Yeah. Do you, do you think Travis will retire soon? No. Nah. I, I don't know. He's 34. I didn't realize how old he was yeah. until uh, the He's other day. He's still balling, though. They gotta, if, they, if they keep winning in the playoffs, you can't not... If him and T Swizzle gets married, though, I like he's Honeymoon, he take the bag. Yeah. You're retired. You're married to a billionaire. I think I think he shot up. Go to concerts, live <laughs> the life. Newcomer of the year. Who do you guys think wins that one? For football or Taylor Swift? Oh my god, <laughs> get out of here! All right, uh, next segment. We're gonna squeeze it in real quick. Let's talk about walk on of the week. So we wanted to we wanted to get it in last week. Obviously, last week's episode ran like an hour forty. Because we were introduced and everyone, not every episode is going to be like that. But we have a lot of cool ideas. We talked about the left fielder one. We need a name for that, by the way. So if you guys just tag us at Holt Ehlers, or is it The Holt Ehlers Show? The Holt Ehlers Show Show. on X um, with some ideas for this segment and what it's called uh, for the left fielder. We need that. But Jack, you also came up with the idea of the walk-on of the week. I want to kind of let you explain it because you guys are obviously Caden, Drew, and Jack are the walk-ons. Uh, this is your guys' segment, so take it over, say what it is, and who y'all got. Yeah, walk-on of the week. Uh, basically, it's a just kind of a scenario that we're going to go through, um, preferably like closer to football season and maybe into baseball a little too, where we're going to pick more of like a local walk-on to give a shout-out to of the week, uh, possibly get them on the pod or give them a gift card from one of our sponsors or something like that. But basically, just want to highlight them. Obviously, us being the walk-ons, uh, you don't always get the recognition that you deserve um, usually gritty guys, team guys, glue guys put in the work. Um, so we kind of want to bring some of that to light here. Uh, tonight, obviously, will be a little bit different. The walk-on of the week this week is none less than the dog, Baker the <laughs> Baker Mayfield. Uh, walked on at Texas Tech after not being recruited by Texas where he wanted to go. Eventually, obviously, transferred to Oklahoma. Beat Texas. Got the golden cowboy hat they got there in the Red River. Won a Heisman. Yeah, won a Heisman. Just absolutely dog. And then this week... Um, tears it up after continuously just being being written off. Um, so, walk on of the week, Baker. Yeah, I like that as the first one, like Baker Mayfield. Um, wh- I was looking at walk on the week, and I know we kind of talked about this recently, so we didn't really have, like, I kind of want to look at weekly games, like college basketball, yeah. college baseball, college football, and pick one from there. And then, like, I like Baker because obviously we're trying to explain it. But looking back at 2023, you know, I was trying like, hey, who was one of the biggest walk-ons that stuck out last year to me? And it was Washington's tight end, Jack Westover. And his story really resonated to me as a walk-on, my walk-on story, maybe your walk-on story as well. But he was someone that, you know, when he first came into Washington, no one knew who he was. There was 11 four-star recruits, and he worked his way in. So he actually had a big year this past year, had over 400 yards receiving as a tight end. For a tight end, it's pretty good. Four touchdown receptions. But I was looking at his story a little bit. It was really interesting was he didn't play football until his senior year of high school. Mm-hmm. He was a basketball player. And he realized, he's like, I'm kind of tired of basketball. I want to go play football. And he played two games his senior year and broke his collarbone. And how did he end up in Washington? Well, he, was, he had a couple of schools. He went to camps that summer. And he, was like, he had like a couple of like FCS schools in the West. I think Montana, a couple of those ones that were looking at him. But they, they stopped really – they didn't offer him because he obviously broke his collarbone. So he's from Bellevue, where Washington it's is. A very yeah. good high Bellevue. school. Yeah, program. I lived in yeah. Bellevue. So he is from Bellevue, and that's where he grew up. And so he's like, you know what? I'm gonna go bet on myself. Walk on here, and like I said before, they had 11 four stars in that class. And he, I you know, reading this article, he, he said he had two goals. One was to earn the scholarship, like always, work hard, earn the scholarship. And two was to, you know, earn the travel team roster by his second season. And he did both of those. And that was kind of something like when I came in, I kind of had the exact same goals. Obviously, the first one I never got. But the second one I did do as well. 
and then he became a complete superstar. But reading about his coaches was this guy just worked hard year in, year out on scout team. You know, he's at fullback, tight end, and he just worked hard on scout team, kind of like Drew. Uh, I don't know if you were scout team here at all, but you, you might have been at Nevada. Nevada when you, yeah. yeah, of course. We all, everyone pretty much started at scout team unless you were a superstar like Colton. But <laughs> um, looking back on it, that's where he made his name was on scout team. He bought out. Another big thing I saw from him was a three-time Pac-12 all-honor academic. Classic. And that's a classic walk-on story. That right? is so a gritty. Guy throwing the all-academic. <laughs> so. We'll have better stories next time. Hopefully, we can invite you know a couple walk-ons on as well. But yeah. I like Jack Westover's story, um, and you know now the season's over. But yeah, just moving good moving story. forward, the vision for sure is definitely get it more local based. Yeah. Um, whether it's a team coming into town or, or one of our own ECU Pirates, but looking forward to that second. Yeah, let's do. It. I think we got the live call already, Drew. Do we have Brody ready? Yes, sir. All right, so Brody got on the show because he responded to us on X. On X at Holt Ayler Show, when we tweeted out, we tweet out, we film um, on Tuesdays, we tweeted it out. He responded to it. Um, he's ended up being a great friend of mine. So he's kind of he's one of the guys that look. I have very like I've had very loyal like fans throughout my career, but I've also had some very loyal haters throughout my career. And Brody has defended me, and don't think I haven't seen it, Brody. We've ended up being good friends from this. Um, but Brody has defended me on Twitter and all this. He calls out people. He's been calling out people. We'll tweet out, like, want to join the show? Um, if so, just comment below a question. He, like, tagged someone and was like, come on, let's let's debate. <laughs> like, episode one. I'm Love like, all it. right, Brody, we got to save you at least for episode two. Um, but this segment is brought to you by Anson Belts. You guys know how we feel about Anson Belts. Um, the best belt in the game. Once you wear it, you will not want to wear any other belt. Whole list, over 10,000 combinations on AnsonBelt.com. Um Sick ECU belts for game days. I definitely wear mine. Jack, Caden, you said y'all wore yours. Uh, Drew, what do you have to say on Anson Belt? I know you uh, recently got yours, so talk about it a little bit. Yeah, uh, I just think it's impressive. Um, obviously, we all talked about it last week about how good the quality is. But, uh, I mean, you don't have to take it from us. Like, there's 30,000 reviews with uh, five stars on Anson Belt. So, I think that speaks for itself. I mean, yep. great r- ratings. Five-star product. Did yep. you bring yours in the studio? Is that what you're looking down at over there? Like, <laughs> oh, no. Nah. I'm I thought you're, sure I got the number from <laughs> right. the I heard it jiggle. I was like, this man holding his belt as he, do this, <laughs> as he says it's review. Oh, all right. So, the, yeah, this live caller, Brody, is, is uh, Brody, you're sponsored by uh, Anson Belt. We're going to send you some. But only if you get Holt's Huddle right. Brody, can you hear us? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, speak up a little bit. Just make sure that we can hear you. Can you get closer? Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, we should be good. Yeah. Um, just try to get closer if you can. Just speak a little bit louder. Kind of want to remind him, Holt Tuttle. With- yeah, so I'm gonna tell you, Holt Tuttle. We're gonna give you a chance to ask questions, explain yourself, and all that. But you are contestant number two of Holt Tuttle. Last week he got it wrong, but Caden and Jack tried to cheat, so we sent him a belt anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much, um, if you get this right, which I'm explaining it, we will send you Anton Belt. Will send you a package of belts that. Obviously, they sponsor us, so now you could wear these on game day if you come to ECU games, which I know you do. I've been to one with you. Um, Absolutely. And kind of do that. So I'm explaining Holt Tuttle. Um, I don't know if you watched last week, and then we'll kind of get into it. So Holt Tuttle, pretty much what it is is I'm going to mimic being an offensive coordinator, and I'm going to tell you a play that I've ran throughout my career, You know, whether it's in high school, college, all-star games, or the NFL. This one that we're um, talking about tonight is a Seattle Seahawks play, so NFL play. Um, and you're going to have a chance to say it back like you're the quarterback in a huddle. So you're gonna, I'm going to say it like the OC. You're going to have to repeat it back. You're going to have one minute to repeat it back like you're in the huddle. If you get it right, you get a package of belts from Anson. And then if you get it wrong, no belts, but you still get asked a question. If we're feeling nice, we still might send you some belts because we appreciate you. But uh, <laughs> you, uh, you good? You ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Can you all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you good. Um all right, so you're gonna have one. We'll give you we'll give you two chance. I'm gonna say it quick one time. We're gonna see if you got it, and then we'll kind of go from there. And then if you don't, I might see if Caden and Jack don't want to cheat. Jack's already getting his hands ready to type it in right here, so I don't know. If, <laughs> no cheating, boys. I want to. We want to win Brody a belt. I'm truthfully, ready to talk to the huddle. <laughs> All right, Brody, ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. Slip right H flare thirty two Tyson Z bubble. All right. All right, guys. We're gonna do a slip right H flare. Z double tight bubble. Oh. Okay. Hey, I like the. All right, guys, here we go. Like he's actually <laughs> stepping in the huddle. 
You still got go. some seconds if you want to try. Again. Yeah, here. Yeah, I'm gonna say it one more time. You got how many seconds? We got forty. All right, we got forty seconds. Here we go. Slip right H flare thirty two Tyson Z bubble. Slip right H flare thirty two V Tyson bubble. Oh, so close. close. All right, how much time oh. do we have? Thirty seconds. Thirty, 30 seconds. seconds. All right, I'm gonna say it close. Drew, do we have one if he gets it right? Do we have a, a ding ready or? All right, we're we wasting his time. All right, here we go. Slip right H flare. 32 Tyson Z bubble. <laughs> Slip right H flare 32 V Tyson bubble. Ah. No. <laughs> <laughs> what, what oh, Is the time out, Drew? He's got, but well, yes. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're going to give Caden and Jack one chance. I'm going to say it quick. Did y'all cheat this time? Yeah, Last no, week. No, I would have had it if we would have went immediately. Right, I'm going to say it quick now, to them. Hey, if they the get it right, Brody. If they say it right, we'll still send you a package of belts. So your belt fate is on Caden and Jack. All right, are we ready, Caden? Yeah. I'm saying it fast. Slip right, H flare, 32 Tyson, Z bubble. Slip right, H square, 32 Tyson. <laughs> H square? Like math class? H, did I say flare? You said square. Oh, I meant flare, but all right. Dang. All right, Jack, the fate of Brody's ants and belt is, lays on you right here. You've heard it. It's 30. H flare. It's H flare. I said square by Jack, accident. You have heard this 82 times now. You have to get this Slip right, right for Brody. Slip right, H flare, 32 Dyson, Z oh bubble. My no! It's Tyson, not Dyson. Oh, I was thinking the Dyson. Uh, you were yeah. cooking. I was cooking. All right, Brody, what do you got for us? I know with, uh, with like the scope of college football and really college sports in general, is like... Uh, you know, like NIL and, you know, the transfer portal and everything like that. I just wanted, wanted to get your guys' thoughts on, on, like, the NIL and basically, basically like, the transfer portal and everything like that. Yeah. Um, I think my thoughts are, first of all, I'm very glad that I'm done with – you know, I kind of got – mute him while we're talking, Juju, so it doesn't um, echo. Um, you know, my thoughts originally are – you know, I got the lat, the first year, I guess, of NIL was my senior year, but it really wasn't a thing – like – People didn't know what to do. Obviously, like these universities weren't prepared. Maybe some were. I didn't think we were most prepared to like handle NIL, or you know, we didn't have the Boneyard Collective, you know, in place yet. Um, but I'm glad that I don't have to deal with that. Um, that I didn't have to in my college career, just for the purpose of, you know, college is supposed to be meant for making memories. And you know, Harold kind of talked on it earlier when we had him on the show. Is just like meeting people, and there's so many connections that you can build here that are worth way more than money. Now, is money great? Yes. And I think it sucks that I wasn't part of it, but I'm also glad I didn't have to deal with it. You know, I just focused on school. I focused on football and I didn't have to worry about, you know, going to make appearances or doing this on social media. Like I was just myself. I didn't have to do anything for money, but was it, was there times when I was like, you know, it's not fair that, you know, ECU is making money off my name, but I'm not like, I mean, yeah, that goes through your head. But um, for the most part, I mean, it's that's it's whether you like it or not it's college football now it's it's college athletics obviously you know we, we think that or at least i think that there has to be some sort of change some sort of rules in place soon because there's a reason texas made the playoff this year obviously everyone knows there's oil money in texas they pretty much i'm not going to say they bought their team they had a lot of guys already there but i mean did it have a huge part of it do they have a great nil thing yeah i mean it doesn't surprise me that they did that um i am certainly glad that that's kind of that I didn't get all of that. I just got a little piece of it. And, you know, I got a little bit of money during my senior year, but nothing like these guys are now. Even the guys on the current ECU team are in the transfer portal quarterbacks coming in and stuff. Caden, what do you think? Yeah, I, I like the NIL, you know, for and, and I dislike the NIL. Like a lot of people, you know, give players a chance to make money off their name. I think that was the whole purpose of it. Like people are making billions of dollars, but there's no regulations. And I think that's where there needs to be some sort of regulation, middle ground. It's just gotten crazy. People talking during the season. It's a basically a free agency whenever to reach out, talk to anyone, snipe players. I like it, but there just has to be some regulations. I would have loved, you know, the NIL being around when I was in college. I could have made a little bit of money off my signaling <laughs> gig, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I there's mixed bags. Uh, I think that we could sit here all night and talk about it, but I think do we just need more regulations because what's going on right now is just top teams will buy their buy their top players. And I think that's cool if you do it then, but at least don't do it midseason. Like how was you know Duke's quarterback? That, yeah. That, how is he at? How, how, how did he join the portal and ask no one to reach out to him? Obviously, yeah. Notre Dame was talking to him midseason, but that's a little bit of a quick view about that. Jack, how do you view? Yeah, similar view. Uh, kind of take to Caden right there. 
Um, I like NIL. I think the players really do bring in millions of dollars for certain institutions. Um, but I do think there needs to be a cap on it. Like at the end of the day, it's about college and football. Shouldn't be about driving Lambos. Yeah, 100%. Uh, like that bond receiver from Bama just went to Texas in the portal after Saban retired. And first Snapchat stories got up there is him at the Lambo dealership. <laughs> So it's just like, hey, good for him. I'm not hating on him. I'm right? No, I'm not. I'm not hating by any means. But I think yeah. college football shouldn't be about hand. that. And because that there's a lack of leadership up top in the NCAA, that college football has the potential to turn to trash. Good. Yeah, Harold made a good point earlier um, when he mentioned like, could you imagine 18 year olds with a hundred thousand dollars or 20 year olds with hundred thousand dollars? This is great. You know, that's great. That's awesome. I hope they make as much as they can. But some of these people. You know, or some of these players like that might not make the NFL or maybe a bus because that that's out there. It's possible. This will be the biggest amount of money they might make their entire life. You know, we need money managers to help make sure these these kids and these young men are investing their money the right way because they might never make this much money in a year again. Oh, 100%. this might be the first, the only time in their life they make a hundred thousand dollars or four hundred thousand dollars depending on who they are. Yeah. So make sure they invest that right to set them up for the future. Yeah. And then I think, you know, Drew, I want to get your opinion. He asked kind of two parts of the question was, you know, NIL and portal. Um, you are in the portal and you're probably getting or you're getting a couple uh five hundred grand offers by NIL and stuff. Explain where you're at. Uh what are your thoughts on it? Um so my thoughts on NIL and the transfer portal and all this stuff is to me is very comparable to early NBA, like 50s, 60s, when the Celtics and the Lakers kind of won the championship just every single year. Why? Because their owner was the richest owner in the league. And Great what, what the NBA did to fix that was add a salary cap. Now, I don't know how college football can go about doing this with amateurism or just calling us pros or semi-pros or whatever. But I think to even the ground is give everyone the same amount of money. Now, can you get around that? Probably. But I think a salary cap is the best way to fix this or maybe that's a the great only. point i've never really thought about that. that's a great thing about the nba and stuff um all right brody you got one more question for us and we need to kind of move on i just want to i just want to know y'all's thoughts about about like you know coaches kind of kind of leaving in the middle of a contract or or you know taking taking a quote-unquote like better job uh, yep while while you know kind of kind of just like giving their team like a heads up and half the time they don't even find out until until or or they find out like on social media through social media and stuff yeah yeah i, I think um we've all kind of been through coaching saying drew you didn't go through a coaching change you were just here with houston right the whole time season. as um, far as head coach yeah so i remember when it definitely affects the team i remember like my freshman year like i got recruited like coach i was getting recruited by coach mo and the whole time i'm thinking like there's no way – like, we were already losing. I knew we were going into it. So, there was a sh very strong chance I was going to play for two head coaches. I knew that when I came here. I got recruited more to ECU from the people, the environment, the school, like what I viewed, you know, the future of ECU football rather than just a coach. But it, it's hard not to get distracted by it. Like, Caden, we figured out – you know, they called a team meeting. Coach Mo was – um on the phone, like, I think it was a December practice, like two weeks but left in the season, and – you know, we Coach Mo was on the phone the whole practice, but you know that wasn't abnormal. Like coaches sometimes get on the phone with boosters or whoever recruits. Uh, and I remember him like walking around, but like there was already rumblings. And I remember like looking at Kate and be like, "Dude, is Coach Mo getting fired right now?" And we we're like, "There's no way." You know, we call up practice. You know, he says, "You know, have a good day at class." Blah blah blah. And I'm like, "Okay, maybe he wasn't." But it turns out he was getting fired on that phone call. He just didn't tell the team. Then about two hours later, I'm sitting in class when we get a text. You know, team meeting immediately. Leave your class right now. And obviously, you know, Coach Mo gets fired. And we see on on social media, I remember someone tweeted out, um, like, there's a team meeting expecting Scotty Montgomery to be fired. I'm like, social media knows before we do. Like, at least let the coach tell us first. And I've already seen, like, with the Arizona, I saw that their players figured out first that he left. So that's more firings than hiring. Caden, how do you feel about it? Yeah, looking like it's tough for the players when your coaches leave. I, I, we went through it, obviously, with the firing, and it was tough because a lot of times at the, the – they're the people who recruited you. They're the people who gave you a shot or you built those relationships with a lot of scholarship guys. Like you trusted these guys. Um, and there's relationships right there. When you look at coaches leaving for better jobs or getting hired, I think it's a little bit different now. You know, back before the NIL, I thought it was kind of wrong because if you transferred, you got to sit out a year. But now people can play six years, seven years. So it's like if a player can leave anytime, I'm, I'm okay with the coaches leaving now for a better yeah. job. It's business. People got to do best with their families. 
So nowadays, like if a coach leads for a better job, you know, be happy for them. It does suck that your relationship you have to rebuild it. But uh, I only think that way recently because of what they changed with people being able to transfer and not stay yeah. out a year. But it's tough. It's tough when your coaches leave. You have to rebuild everything. It's you have to earn those rights. And now, if you don't like it, you can just transfer out. So I think the last two years it's changed a lot for my own personal opinion, but I I'm cool with today with coaches leaving. Whenever. Jack, you were someone who went through, obviously you played for multiple coaches in college. What are your thoughts on it? Yeah. So actually my fourth season at Nevada, my last year there, um, we were getting ready. We just beat Colorado state. We we're getting ready to go to a bowl game, uh, found out quick lane bowl or whatever. Like next morning we wake up and on Twitter we see, Jay Norvell heading to Colorado State, and we're like, what? Like, we just beat them 52-10. Sure enough, Teamworks message 30 minutes later, team meeting now. Jeez. And so he – he, but he kind of told us that, and he was like, you know what? Like, they're going to triple my salary or whatever it was. He was like, this – like, I'm doing this for my family. I'm, I'm setting up my family, and I don't know how you could be mad at someone like that. Like, you can't. Yeah, it sucked. Our whole staff left before our bowl game, like, obviously put us at disadvantage, but, like – what are you going to do? Like he's providing for his family at the end of the day, every one of us would do the same thing. hundred percent. And you like, I think the best thing I've heard is like, take away just the sports. Like if you get offered the same job for triple to pay for double to pay, like you're going to take it. And that's what, that's what you got to view it as now is like, it's Go just put such, on a different hat. Yeah. yeah. It's just such a business. So yeah, I think the dynasty of like, especially G five, like legendary coaches, it's pretty much over. It's going to yeah. be the top power five schools. that are going to have any legendary dynasties left for sure. Brody, appreciate you for joining us, dude. Yes, sir. I uh, appreciate you guys. You guys are definitely building, building something special here. Heck yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. See you, man. All right, let's get um, last segment of the show is our best bets. And boy, was it a rough week. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you weren't riding uh, the boys because uh, we did not have a good week. I go 0-2 on my – hey, it is hard for me because I am a football guy and I'm not betting on – I don't have college football that I can bet on right now and I'm not betting on NFL because it's kind of illegal. Not illegal for me. Uh, yeah, for me to get back into the NFL, it wouldn't look good. Um, it's kind of frowned upon, I guess. So I'm doing basketball. I'm like, I love basketball. I love the Knicks. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to you know, ride the Knicks tonight. But uh, I am uh, – it, it's hard for me. So stick with me. They have no excuses at all, but, hey, stick with me. I go 0-2. Jack goes 0-2. I'm throwing a red challenge flag on that. I said I'm taking the Lions. I didn't say spread. I, said I think you the said lines. the spread. I think you said minus three, and they uh, they won by two. Well, it was it was minus two. They won by one. I have to watch the tape. Um, yeah, we, we're, we're, we're watching the tape. All right. this. Caden goes zero and two. He calls himself a guru of sports no. betting. Goes zero and two. College football. I like college football. <laughs> I like major league baseball. And I have to suffer college basketball right now. And I did NFL because everyone else was doing NFL. But San Diego State that I bet on last week. They were an underdog, so I said minus two. I would, if they were plus points, I was taking that. I was like, all right, sweet. They got bodied. Well, they were up 15, 15 points, and they go up on a freaking nine-point drought, not scoring. It's like, my luck, but we yeah. lost. And then Drew, the hero of the bunch, goes one and one. He's the best one. So he's in the lead right now um, with the Bucks. I guess he won He won that one. Um, so obviously me, Caden, and, and Jack are – in the loser seat right now, we have a couple uh, rumblings of punishment. We have the cinnamon challenge. What else did we have that we talked about? The Wendy's four by four. The Wendy's four by eat four four by fours from in Wendy's. Forty minutes. What was it? Beer in mile. Four by, beer mile. Yeah. And then Drew said, if you lose like too much straight to go skydiving. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll I don't see. Remember if I said that. I think I said that. Or one. you said yeah, that. I said that one. So we'll see about that one. But uh, you guys, if you have any ideas for the punishment of the worst better of the month, still let us know. But uh, let's get into it. Um, Caden, you go first. Uh, can guru. Yeah, guru. <laughs> so I've been I've been cold recently. Um, I like the buff. I like the Bills uh, minus two here against uh, the Chiefs. It's cold. It's freezing. I know that the Chiefs are used to that. But I think playing in, in Buffalo is just something different. Those fans are insane. Uh, they've been you know it's three straight playoffs. You know Josh Allen has it lost to another young quarterback that's going to be a future hall of famer so i think this is his year to this week not his year because i think lamar is going all the way but i think this is his week against to make up against um you know patrick mahomes patrick mahomes has two playoff wins over him knocking out the playoffs so i think the environment is one factor and i think josh allen and the 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 Bills have just been consistent this year you know they start off the year shaky but the last five to six games they've been consistent 
they have might have played games close, but they've just played a lot of consistent football. And I think that's a little bit different with the Chiefs. So, so you got Bills minus four. You minus got a second two. Bet? Minus, minus two. two. Yeah. Second bet? Second bet's UConn. Obviously, it's a Saturday game. No basketball? Li- yeah, basketball against Villanova. It's at Villanova. College basketball, you know, when you're on the road. UConn's like 15-2, and two, but it doesn't matter. You're playing at Villanova as a good team like that. It's going to be probably UConn plus money, if not minus two to minus four. Um, so I like UConn. Uh, they have three players right now that have a chance to be drafted. That's the you first one of them. Yeah, I do actually. Um, let me check the notes. Donovan Clinigan. Oh, listen, oh, I, I follow Tristan Newton and ex ECU. He's transfer. not one of them that's listed to he's, be drafted though. I think he's pretty good. He's he, good. Uh, he's yeah, point guard. So Tristan Newton obviously leaves ECU, wins an Addy, and Stephon Castle's Newton. there. Alex Carbon, but uh, Carbon. I don't know if I pronounced that right. But I just like them right now. Minus two. They're they're getting healthy again. Big thing with UConn, they haven't been healthy. Uh, they're playing Villanova. Villanova's knows to get streaky at times, but. I just think this is UConn's year. I think I like the future on UConn for the whole season, too. Back to back. Didn't they win it last year? Yeah, they won it last year. Yeah, I think so. All right. So you got UConn and the Bills. Jack, who do you got? All right. Uh, first, obviously, I'll just get out the way now. Um, hope you guys just don't think this is all heart. I really do think it's going to be a two possession game. You're picking the Niners. I'm that is 100% heart. 49ers minus eight and a half. Get that out of the way. <laughs> but um, next one is a player prop, and I actually believe in it pretty heavily. And it's Lamar over one and a half passing touchdowns. That's a um, good one. I think the Ravens, obviously, I think that the run game is heavily noticed by other opponents. Um, and with Zay Flowers and OBJ's kind of been heating up he's a been little good, bit. Dude. Yeah, he's been getting better. Um, so I think he can throw two touchdowns easily. All right. So you're taking the Niners, but you're taking Lamar over one and a half passing. We'll see if they uh, end up meeting in the Super Bowl, like Caden says. Drew, who do you got this week? Do you have some player props? <laughs> For the fans. I do. I do. Let's go. All what right. do you got? All right. The champ is here. Okay. <laughs> I got Mayfield over passing yards. His line is at 246. Uh, the Lions give up about 250 a game, and I think you can say Tampa Bay's passing offense is above average. So I'm going with that. And then I'm going with probably one of the biggest locks in NFL football, <laughs> which is CMC with a rushing touchdown. Sometimes it's so much of a lock That's that a it's not prop? even – yeah, it is so much of a lock that it's not even on the line sometimes. So, is there a line for it? Yeah, point five. Wow. No, no, no. Is there a line like odds? Like, is it is it minus two hundred? Is it? Oh heck, if I know, but it's, He's taking if it's he minus if it's <laughs> minus four hundred, it might not even be worth it. Like, I think that's worth it. He's definitely minus four hundred. Drew thinks it's worth it. No bet's ever worth it minus four hundred unless you have a fifteen leg parlay. <laughs> so you got Christian McCaffrey and Baker Mayfield passing yards. So riding the Dogs. Baker Mayfield high. <laughs> He's riding Baker to win that, to stay on top of our betting segment. He's taking Baker to win this week. Took him last week. Are you just going to keep riding him all the way to the Super Bowl, huh? I'm going to ride them this week. <laughs> I got to check the odds on that CMC touchdown because if it's minus 400, we got to we gotta put limits Drew's on there. Drew's calling the best, and he's like, it's a lock, minus 1,200. <laughs> 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 oh, my bets of the week. Look, boys. I am uh, – look, I, I called the Knicks to win. They didn't win. <laughs> you think that's funny, Jared? What the heck? <laughs> Was the it, they were it. like minus 200. You want, to talk about, you want to talk about my heart picks. No. And I'm, you're going back to them. No, I was just no, I was just talking about last week. My, last week I fought with my heart with the Knicks. I, I said they were going to win. They didn't win. But this week I'm thinking with my mind. <laughs> and that is why I'm going to go – with the Knicks money line <laughs> versus the Raptors this Saturday. Look, the Knicks, I said last week they traded their whole young core. Guess who they traded them to? The Raptors. Oh, they traded some game. pieces. They got some pieces. Look, R.J. Barrett, he's going to have a good game versus the Knicks. But the Knicks are going to come out on top. It, this is our year. The Knicks, this is our year. We're 21 <laughs> and 15 right now. The Raptors don't have the best record. We're going to have you know good odds. I'm taking them to cover the spread. Or money line, whatever one you want, whatever the odds are. It's Saturday, so the line hasn't came out yet. What do the you Knicks, think the odds are? I I don't care what it is. I'm taking it. The Knicks are covering. Um, so that is my mind. That's not my heart this time. I'm riding with the Knicks. Revenge game. Look, R.J. Barrett's going to have a good game. He just got traded from the Knicks. I literally have an R.J. Barrett jersey. That's the only Knicks jersey I have. I don't know. Someone someone uh, tagged me on Twitter and was like, why are you a Knicks fan? Why do you put yourself through the punishment? Because this year is our year. We're going to win it all this year. That's why. Um, we're going to win the Eastern Conference, and we're going to go beat 
I don't know who out west. I guess who who out in the Sacramento west Sacramento Kings. Uh, that, that's your heart talking. Knicks are winning the championship this year. I'm taking the Knicks spread on Saturday versus the Raptors. And then another part. This is a little bit of my heart talking, but I've done a little. I got a little stats to back. I'm going to take the Pirates. ECU basketball Saturday um, versus UAB, a 10-6 and 6 UAB team, one of the top teams in the conference. Look, ECU's trying to find themselves right now at 9-8, and eight, obviously. Um, got a lot of talent. They just got to put it all together. I actually got a future on them to win the conference championship in the tournament. So that's plus 1,700. Hopefully I hit that. But I'm taking the Pirates to cover the spread. I want to take money line. The spread might just be easier for them to cover. They've had a lot of close games. UAB only has... They've won three conference games. They haven't won one by one more than four points in any of their games. So I'm taking the Pirates to cover the spread, and those are my two bets. The Pirates and the Knicks are my two uh, my two bets. But a lot boys, of hard bets. I don't know about them. We'll see. We'll see. You're at the bottom with me right now, I'm buddy. Picking, We're both over I'm, two. I'm out here picking good odds, tough matchups. Okay, <laughs> at the end of the day, we're both defeated right now. We're All just right. looking for a little hope, and I'm, uh, I'm digging into my heart to find that hope. <laughs> Jack is too. Jack's taking the Niners. Drew's. We're all going hard except you. Drew. Drew's winning, and he took actually, Baker Mayfield to win. <laughs> you know what? I'm actually going to take CMC off. You're right. That's too easy. So I'm actually going to go Aaron Jones for a rushing there touchdown. There we go. All right, there we That's go. That's respect. Better right odds. There. Better odds. Respect. We had a good game last week, boys. It was fun. We got anything else? You want to hit on anything else? We're good. No, I, if I wish we, I would have. Oh my goodness! If I wish we were known, it was NASCAR day. A NASCAR shirt, NASCAR hat. This is a Jeff Gordon hat. It is. I don't know if you can see it, but that's what it is. Nothing else, just the Jeff Gordon hat. <laughs> Let's theme next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have to see. Uh, watch it if you're if you're listening. Go check it out on YouTube. Go to look up you know the Holt Naylor show on YouTube. Go to Pirate Radio TV playlist. We'll be right there. Uh, all of your podcast channels. Just look up the Holt Naylor show. We appreciate you guys watching. Shout out to our sponsors, Worth Chiropractic, Anson Belts, and that is episode two. We appreciate you guys.